Now in this Debaco University video, we're going to go over some testing cannabis plants potency and kind of looking at the debate whether we should be providing a number or a range when we're looking at potency related to cannabis. Now it is important to test uh, cannabis for uh, its potency. We're looking at more of an analytical report than kind of this kind of coloration difference because it can be difficult to determine, well, is this uh, where does this exactly fall? What percentage? So we're gonna look at this in more detail. However, looking at the general trends of potency of cannabis samples, uh, percentage THC and CBD in cannabis samples seized by the uh, DA from 1995 to 2019. And we can see that there is generally a trend of an increase in THC and overall generally a decrease here in CBD percentage of those seized by the DA uh, for, uh, environmental agencies. Now, when we're looking at the percentages here, these are ones that are seized on the street. We are seeing some, of course, medical benefits from the CBD, but the fact that it may lack that psychoactive high may make it less of a street desirable end product. So looking at this research article here, and again, brief summary will only be provided, but the role of NAS spec looking at the cannabis industry to get some of this detail of testing. So there's five uh, cannabinoids here uh, presented. And in, ca in cannabis potency typically refers to the percentage of THC and or the CBD cannabidiol in the plant material. However, at least three other uh, cannabinoids are routine, routinely monitored, including THCA, CBDA, and CBN. So just remember that there are more than just the THC and the CBD that tends to get a lot of the highlight or the attention. So companies may offer uh, many tests, actually, and this is a good thing. Uh, while the main interest is typically the cannabinoids and terpenes, remember the contaminant testing is required and the product needs to pass all of those categories as well. So don't just caught up in, oh, looking at THC, CBD, and cannabinoids, uh, maybe some terpenes. We're also looking at kind of passing all of the contaminant testing, such as heavy metal testing, mycotoxin testing, microbial analysis, and so on. Also, when we're looking at uh, cannabinoids, it's more than just THC and CBD. There's a list here of what some companies will test for. So it's good to have that full kind of understanding of all the cannabinoids present in that final plant material. Now, sample size does vary. So depending on what end product is being tested will require a different amount of a minimum sample. Keep in mind that the number of tests performed should correlate with the si total lot size of the product produced. For example, while 2 grams of plant material is required if you're harvesting 10 plants versus 1,000 plants, there should be a different number of samples even though each sample only requires 2 grams. Here's something um, provided with some general guidelines from uh, companies. Waters and drinks should be looking at 10 milliliters or provide the full finished product for determining, determining the fill weight on analytical scale. Plant material looking at about two grams, concentrates only need about one gram, and infused products about four units of those infused products. Just to give you an idea of the sample size with the different um, testing that occurs. Now the testing instruments, High Performance Liquid Chromatography or HPLC with diode ray detection allows us to determine run spectral analysis for confirmed end results. Good to know what your lab is utilizing for testing equipment to generate those important numbers on the analytical report. Now there are testing compliance standards. Uh, testing laboratories should meet uh, GMP standards, GLP standards, and FDA compliant pharma practices. So this is just kind of looking at good manufacturing practices, good labor practices, and meeting those pharmaceutical standards. All other additional things to be looking for if you're especially comparing or looking at determining what lab you want to get your plant material tested at. So there is a great debate here. Should the test results be expressed as a number or a range. For example, asking what is your age and providing it with how many years old you are, or what is your age based on you know, general ranges here. So there's a great debate in the cannabis industry. Should we be looking at quoting an exact number or should we be quoting the potency in a range? So if we're looking at, kind of looking at expressed as a single number, the advantage is that it is just an exact single number. As we see here, 38.61%. Uh, uh, this is uh, known uh, with certainty, so that's a great thing. However, the disadvantages is really to get that known number, that precise number, it does require a homogenized sample. So this cannot be done with just a single dry flower. It has to be sold as kind of that homogenized sample. 
So with that homogenized sample, you can't just test one single dry flower. You have to take multiple dry flowers, cut them all up, kind of get a kind of a mixture of that, and then test that to get that kind of exact number. Because different flowers, as you know, are going to have slightly different variables, depending where they're located on the plant and just inherent uh, in var variability uh, of that harvest. Now, when we're looking at a range, the advantage of having the uh, range expressed is that it gives you the expected um, range to, from that product. It can be formed as a lot of a dry flower harvest. We're testing multiple flowers. You can say, oh, the lowest flower was here, the highest flower is here, so the expected range of this harvest lot would be this. The disadvantage is it does not give a single fixed number due to the variability. And it's harder for regulatory agencies to handle this pharmaceutical grade material that have a, want a request a number and not a range. So it's important to realize that we are dealing with plant material and it's expected to have some variability. Looking at different tomatoes or apples, you know, there's going to be different variability from one to another. Hopefully that range will be very small, but it's very hard to pinpoint an exact number. So this is kind of the great debate. Should it be expressed as a range or a number? Whichever one you agree with, or one that you feel that should be the accepted put on a label. Uh, there are different videos here, so you can explore uh, the advantages and kind of more details of the uh, range kind of produ production of the analy analytical report. Or you could explore another video that will look at the number as far as provided on an analytical report. Hopefully this provides you with some good information and kind of this comparison that you may not have thought of to again, help improve your education regarding cannabis at all stages, including growing, as well as the end product and testing all provided here on Tobacco University.